Peking man is a subspecies of Homo erectus which inhabited the Zahukarian cave of northern China. The first fossil, a tooth, was discovered in 1921, and the Zahukarian cave has since then become the most productive Homo erectus site in the world. The following information is taken from the World Archaeology Journal, July 3rd, 2011, entitled Peking Man. In 1921, Swedish geologist John Gunther Andersen was visiting Zahukadien when he was asked by a local resident to come see a cave full of dragon bones. Andersen recognized them as fossils. From then until the outbreak of the Second World War in the East in 1937, extensive excavations were undertaken at the site by an international team. So this excavation was not a local event. It sparked worldwide interest in what was being excavated in the caves of Zahukadien. First, ancient tooth were discovered, then fragments of skull. They were found 20 meters down associated with stone tools and layers of rock debris from the collapsed roof of the limestone cave. The remains represented an early form of human. Other fossils were later found elsewhere on Dragon Bone Hill. By the time excavations ended, at least 12 individuals were represented in the assemblage of the fossils. They were estimated to be about a million years old. Peking Man was instrumental in the foundation of Chinese anthropology and fostered an important dialogue between the Western and Eastern science for decades to come. The fossils became the center of anthropological discussion and were classified as a direct human ancestor, propping up the out of Asia hypothesis that humans evolved in Asia. The remains were classified as a new genus and species of human, Sinanthropus pekinensis, or Chinaman from Pekin. The caves had been occupied for long periods, fires had been lit, stone tools had been crafted, and deer had been consumed in abundance. What was most significant, however, was the apparent antiquity of the fossils, pushing humanoid activity in Northeast Asia back hundreds of thousands of years earlier than had previously been assumed. Peking Man also played a vital role in the restructuring of the Chinese identity following the Chinese Communist Revolution and was intensively communicated to working class and peasant communities to introduce them to Marxism and science, overturning deeply rooted superstitions and creation myths. So he shook up the whole system on what they thought the original origins of their people were. Peking Man shook him up. Peking Man was claimed as the direct ancestor of the modern Chinese, allowing patriotic Chinese archaeologist Lin Yang to claim that the Chinese were the Earth's most ancient original inhabitants. This, however, was a serious error, though an understandable one at the time, when the science of human origins was less advanced than they are today. In the face of new and compelling counter-evidence is another matter. Chinese museums and schools still teach the plain nonsense that the archaic skull of Peking Man has distinctive East Asian features. This produced a strong schism between Western and Eastern interpretations, especially as the West adopted the out of Africa hypothesis by late 1967 and the Peking Man's role in human evolution diminished as merely as an offshoot of the human line. though out of Africa is now the consensus. During recent DNA research, samples were taken from 12,000 living Chinese and compared with samples from Peking Man fossils. Most of the original fossils had been lost mysteriously during the Second World War. Only casts survived, but further examples have since been excavated. The genetic evidence proved that Peking man had no living descendants among modern Chinese. All modern Chinese are direct descendants of a new species of modern humans that formed in Africa around 200,000 years ago. 
Peking man interbreeding with human ancestors is frequently discussed, especially in Chinese circles. Peking man is characterized by a long and heavy fortified skull featuring an inflated bar of bone circumscribing the crown, crossing along the brow ridge over the ears and connecting at the back of the skull, as well as the sagittal keel running across the midline. The bone of the skull and long bones is exorbitantly thickened. The face was protrusive, eye sockets wide, jaws robust and chinless and teeth large. Brain volume range from 850 to 1225 cc for an average of just over 1000 cc compared to an average of 1270 cc for present day modern males and 1130 for present day modern females. The limbs are broadly anatomically comparable to those of modern humans. Homo erectus in such northerly latitudes may have averaged roughly 150 centimeters, which comes out to about 4 foot 11 inches in height, compared to 160 centimeters, which comes out to about 5 foot 3 inches in height, for more tropical populations. We now know that Peking man represents the spread of a new species of humanoid, Homo erectus, in an earlier out of Africa migration beginning about a million years ago. The Chinese fossils probably date back between 800,000 and 400,000 years ago, but examples of essentially the same species have been found in many other places and of many different dates. What is clear, however, is that all evolutionary branches from the species eventually died out. The last European Neanderthals, perhaps as recently as 35,000 years ago. Africa continued being an evolutionary crucible in which new species were periodically created until it finally produced a super intelligent species capable of the cultural adaptation necessary to colonize and dominate the whole of the planet, the Homo sapiens, modern humans basically us and make no mistake about it the first people to dominate this planet were black people that's right the first people everywhere in russia asia england italy romania and america all black And whether you like it or not, the DNA proved that the original Chinese no doubt have descendants from Africa. Therefore, the original Chinese were black. Yes, the oldest evidence that you will find anywhere will support that the aboriginal people on this planet were black people. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And never forget, thou art.